Hello guys and welcome back to the Motor Recon Podcast. I'm your host Adam. I'm joined again today by Rob. Um, what we're going to do today is actually we've had a request. Uh, so this is a topic that a listener has chosen. Uh, unfortunately they didn't leave a name so apologies on that front. If it was you just let me know and I'll put your link in the description. Um, what we're going to do is the perfect three car garage. In our minds what our, our own personal three car garage would be. If money was no object what would we have? Now, I know this is questions that probably gets asked a lot of car people, um, but normally it's five car garage. I think it's a lot harder with three. So we're going to narrow it down into separate categories. So the first one, I think, will have to be a daily. You can't have a perfect garage and not have a daily run around to do all your odds and ends, go shopping, do whatever in. The next one will be, well, two of the topics. So we've got a track car. So something that you would maybe use on a, on a uh, go down on a Sunday to a track day, absolutely blast it around and, you know, have a bit of fun. You might have to get transport there, but it's one of the things. Uh, and then thirdly is sort of a weekend car, a treat. If you're going to an occasion, like you're going out to a, a restaurant or you're just going to want to go for a Sunday blast, your weekend car. So I'll kick us off on the bat uh, with my first choice. So this is my daily car, the one you go to and from work and have a bit of fun on the way. Probably an obvious choice for me. It is the Fiesta ST, but more specifically, the performance edition of that. Uh, the reason I've picked this one is because I personally like it. Uh, I've driven the PE a few times now, and I absolutely adore the car. Um, a lot comfier than the Mark 7.5 ST. I don't think it looks quite as aggressive, but I do like it, especially in this orange. 600 of them made. What more do you need? I think also the less aggressive looks is probably something that um, suits the daily driver sort of status you're trying to put on this. The whole point of your daily driver status, I think, is you do want to blend in a little bit. Yeah. I as mean, in you don't want to look crazy conspicuous. And you don't look conspicuous, in a, at least in the UK, at least, in a Fiesta ST. Yeah. And to the casual eye, a lot of people won't know it's the performance edition. That's just the bit that matters to you. Yeah. So. The only people who would know is if people know the only one you can get in orange is that. And don't get me wrong, orange is not a subtle colour, and I did consider that. No, no, that is, that is very true. But, um, However... And truth be told... Oh, go on, sorry. Yeah, and I mean, truth be told, this would probably be the Fiesta ST, maybe not the Performance Edition, but an ST3 would probably be my first choice as well. But for the sake of the list, I have chosen something else. Yeah, you're going to like your next in choice sort of thing. Uh, I can, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I do get that, and I think for me, the reason I want this one is because I do, I do just personally like the orange. I think it suits the car very well. So one and a half liter. Oh, very, very yeah, true, yeah. One and a half liter, 200 horsepower, so more than enough for a daily little run around. And on my commute to work anyway, when we do go back to the office and whatnot, uh, it is actually a lot of country roads. So that would be my daily commuter car, and there's nothing better on a B road than an ST. I can hands up for that. From being an owner of one and driven a few, there's nothing better. I left Porsche Boxsters for dead. No, as I said, it fulfills the brief of also being practical when you need it to as well. Um, the only thing I would be concerned about is potentially, um, all joking aside, it being stolen. Yeah, they are very, very much uh, a target of thieves, but there is now, Ford particularly have done things now on the Mark 8 to sort of mi minimise that a bit. Um, because the reason the old ones used to get stolen was because people could nick them uh, and then plug something into the OBD port and then obviously start the car via the electronics, it would sort of hack into it and, and start yeah. the car. Or, uh, like they did with uh, mine, but they didn't manage to steal it because luckily I was in, was they came in and, to get the key, uh, keyless um, system. But for... Yeah, but I would say that's the only thing that would worry me, to be honest about that. Yeah, but they've, they've done something now where, because they have to put the OBD port in the certain location for regulation. I didn't actually know that, but I was watching a video on it the other day, surprisingly. Uh, and they, ha they actually have to have it there for regulation purposes. But what they've done in the Mark 8, which they didn't do in any other ones, is they've built it to regulation purposes. But if you want to move it, that's up to you. So rather than having it fixed in, there's two little bolts you can just undo. Slide the unit down and you could hide that anywhere you want. Yeah, um, which, so it makes it more difficult. Yeah. And also, now, then there's the questions of, but I imagine the situation you would end up in with that, though, is um, they just trash the car. Yeah, and well, yeah, they'd smash your windows and whatever, probably. But there's other things you can do as well, like mount tune offer a system where you, it does it, it's a flash from the remap, 
uh, and the, it basically disables the immobilizer until a particular mobile phone, yours for instance, if you set it up with yours, is entered uh, into the car. And if you don't, obviously you've lost your phone, they've thought of that as well. You can do uh, make a cord on the steering wheel so you could push like, I don't know, volume up, volume down, set cruise control on off, and then that's your like your four sure. four button cord to get in. Um, so they have, they have there is ways around it, but again, like you say, it's, it's probably the only worry. They might trash your car. Um, yeah, but it's a risk I'm willing to take for my daily. Um, I absolutely love them, and I can't see myself getting anything else. Now. Oh, agreed. Yeah, well, we we both um, really like them, so I think um, yeah, no, that's pretty much a done deal. I agree. So right, we're going to go and um, yours now. Let's have a look at your daily option. Yeah, so for my daily option, um, I've chosen a Jaguar I Pace. Um, Reasons being is, um, believe it or not, I actually do believe in electric cars and I do think that they do have a place in the world. Um, I would have it purely because it's probably the only SUV I actually like. Yeah. And that's the God's honest truth of it. Um, I will say as well, we've been fortunate enough to sit in a few of these and they've been lovely. As in, we've been to Jaguar garages and I was very impressed by them. Um, it's a very practical car as well. Um, as you say, as it's not small, don't get me wrong, but the spec we've chosen here will come with all of the assists to make your life as easy as possible. Um, it'll be cheap to run on a day-to-day -day basis thanks to it being an electric car. Um, they have good range on them as well, um, which is good to see. You're talking above 250 miles per charge. And I did see a video that showed that you can get a realistically decent range out of these as well in the real world, which is nice to see. Um, as you said, this one in particular is 400 horsepower, give or take, um, more than enough, like way more than enough for what you would ever need out in the real world. Um, yeah, and as you say, I really do like these. I think they're quite stylish. I think you will save good money on the bombing about on your day-to-day -day business. And I find it as a nice way to support Jaguar and their Formula E efforts. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I actually do like the I-Pace as well. I can't deny it, particularly the spec you've chosen here. Um, for those of you listening, he's picked a very nice deep blue um, uh, I-Pace. He's actually gone for the EV400, the HSE spec as well. So it's got all your mod cons on it, like heated steering wheel, heated seats, automatic parking, um, radar cruise control, you name it, it's got it, you know. So, um, for a daily, I don't think you could probably want anything else. No, and like you said, the only thing that I think it has a disadvantage over, potentially a smaller car, is obviously that side of it. But what you lose in the smaller parking sort of practicality is you do make up for in a massive boot, and you could take an entire family on a trip somewhere in great comfort and also if you do want a bit of fun these are apparently very good in the corners yeah they do handle pretty well i've heard um considering the weight i think well as you say not to mention these cars do have a racing pedigree and um, the series is ending soon in formula e but they did have the i-pace trophy as the support race series or uh formula e and they look great as race cars. I was really surprised yeah, how, they go, how good they looked. I've only seen, well, I saw it, we saw it at Geneva, didn't we? And then we saw it going up the hill at Goodwood. Uh, but I don't think you were there last yeah. year, were you? Um, to see it. But it, yeah, we're flown up the hill at Goodwood. Very, very, very good looking car. And to as a daily, I can't fault that really. Um, the only thing that potentially would put me off, like you say, is if you were on a long journey you'd have to plan it a bit better but nowadays like you say the infrastructure yeah. is, the infrastructure's got a lot better so pretty much every service station has chargers on it just plan it around Look, the, I, yeah. and I would say as well uh, given that this is a three car garage and given that our spend is unlimited I would hazard a guess that I do live in a house where I can charge it at home. <laughs> I would hope you know? so. If you were street parking some of your other choices that I've seen I would worry. He <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, um, the, yes, so the only things that come with this are the usual electric car uh, drawbacks that we've discussed on previous podcasts. But I'm willing to accept those drawbacks uh, because I think, actually, the iPace gives you a lot in return. And I agree there. Um, so, the next one that we were going to do is a track car. Now, this we didn't literally uh, restrict it to track only as if as in it's not road legal but 
I think it's good. It's the pretty hardcore cars that we've chosen. So. I think track orientated is yeah. the word you would go for. And I don't think yeah. we can have any arguments with the ones we have picked because they are literally for the track. So um, the one I've gone for, um, not what I thought I was going to go for, but I it, my my change of mind at the last minute. Um, so it actually it actually is the five seventy S GT four race car. So the, basically, it's a a customer variant of the actual. Uh, racing it's a, it's a GT4 racing car, isn't it? Give it a yeah. I mean, if you look at the interior here, for it's got it's got like you say, a proper racing steering wheel with your with your buttons, like full race seats, very very stripped out interior. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think this actually is road legal. Um, given the fact they've got the sat nav and stuff still in the middle, I would hazard a guess that that is um, that is the case. But it's like I say, it's got full roll cage, full racing seat in for the driver's seat, and then a bit slightly less uh, buckety for the passenger. Full race hard. I was actually surprised at the price of this. Um, I thought it wasn't, and call me controversial, I don't actually think it's too bad considering you're getting a full blown GT4 racing car. No, and to be honest, that's what actually swayed me for it because I did have a back, I did have another option which actually wasn't another McLaren, but if we get a chance later, we'll talk about that. Um, but this for me, I thought oh, for £170,000, give or take 500 quid, um, I think you're getting a lot of car for the money. Like, well, you're getting a, a racing experience or as close as you can get as an average Joe punter. Yeah, cause let, um, yeah, I'm not even sure if it's road legal, to be honest. Cause... And I'll, and let, let's face it, you're going to pretty much beat everything else on the track. If you put a pair of slicks on this, which you can do, it's got the aero package on, like full splitter side skirts, fixed rear wing. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not, meant, it's not full, full, full race car, like the actual GT race car, but... You've got it's not far off, it, yeah, though. Not far. And this particular one as well, uh, I don't know if they spec'd it like this from factory, but it's got a, the full sort of McLaren livery on it and got actual Rich, uh, Richard Meal uh, sponsors on it, which obviously are partners of McLaren, but very good spec. Yeah, it's them. really cool, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, I think the reason I did pick it is just because I thought the price was good. It will be nuts on track, and very, very easy. If it's not already, it doesn't actually specify, but very easy... Uh, if it isn't track, if it isn't road legal, to convert it, to just yeah, and you can pretend you're in Lamar. I mean, yeah, I sounds good to me. I do think it is road legal, um, because it starts to start having stuff in it. Why would they put that in if it wasn't? Well, they might have no choice. I think it might be um, some sort of there might be some rule requirements around that. I'm not sure. Yeah, for the GT because it does car. say that it's a new GT4 race car. So yeah, so if. Potentially, potentially not. It doesn't specify on here, but yeah. I, I could do some uh, oh, no, approved passenger flight. Yeah, FIA approved. Okay, so you, you could take it on uh, actual. You could actually. You do could it take it on an actual race potentially. Yeah, yeah. race license. Uh, so that, that's the reason yeah. I picked that. So well, let's move on uh, to your option now. I love your option. Well, this is definitely not um, approved for any sort of racing series in any way, shape, or form. Um, you would even argue that it's not even um, the best track car available either. I'm more than willing to concede that. Um, um, I'm talking about the Aston Martin Vulcan. Uh, so this one we're looking at in particular is a 2016 model. Um, I'm just going to go over some of the stats on this because I think it is quite alarming to say the least. So um, the Vulcan comes with a 7-litre naturally aspirated V12. I believe, is it um, based on the older V12? Yeah, the, well, it, it is, isn't it? It's, it's based, based, based on, on the, the older last, one. Because it's not turbocharged, the new one. Yeah, yeah, it's naturally charged. aspirated, yeah. yeah. So they board it out, and essentially you've got 7 litres of displacement, and that's producing 820 brake horsepower. And as you say, that's mad from naturally aspirated. It's yeah. a... It's an absolute animal. There's no other way to describe it. And I think for a track-only experience, that is exactly what I want. Yeah. Now, like you said, it's not approved for any race series. It's not road legal, although someone has converted one to be road legal. Absolute props yeah. to that man for being a, a mentalist. Um, the one thing I love about this car is the side exit exhaust, for one. I love side exhaust. That's just a thing for me, especially down that nice carbon fibre no, um, they, they, there's only one key there. distinction out of this for me, and that's those rear tail head. Yeah. yeah, those rear tail lights. They are so smart. Like that is unbelievably good looking. And um, yeah, to be honest, 
I'm not going to be racing in an FIA-approved race series with my track car anyway. I want to be scared shitless, and yeah. that's what this is going to do. Yeah, absolutely. And I've, we've heard a few of these, like you say, going up Goodwood Hill and various other places. Um, they even had one going around doing a few laps when I was at the British GT racing, and wow, oh, wow, are they loud. They yeah. are absolutely Nothing insane. will make me feel more alive than the Vulcan on a track. No. Plenty of things will go faster. I can't think of anything really that is modern that will make me feel more alive. No. Look, I mean, look at that interior. There's nothing to it, really, and a few, a few uh, bullet switches, a cut-off top steering wheel as well with all the race buttons on it. I mean... It's just... It's just mad. No, it's just mad. And I think it's mad in all the right ways. And for me, yeah, I want an old school, huge displacement V12 in the front and just terror coming out of the back. And uh, for those of you who are listening, we are actually looking at cars that are currently for sale in the UK. Uh, This Vulcan is currently up for £2 million. If you have £2 million and you're in the market for it, just go and do it. Don't even think. Yeah. Just go and buy it. It's only done 100 miles. It was essentially brand new. But I suppose yeah. you won't rack up that many miles when you're on track. You wouldn't do, I guess, but because it is only track. Only. And to be fair, some tracks in the UK don't even allow it because it's too loud. So the decibel, they're just too loud for the track. They don't allow them on. I think It's Sil- brilliant. Silverstone yeah. does and a few others. But um, Okay, so next one. So this is this is our weekend um, sort of treat. You, you've got the girlfriend out. You're going for a nice restaurant in the evening or you just want to go for a Sunday blast with the guys and you're on, or you're going for like a, a, a car meet and you're going on the, the drives up to you know, the North Coast 500, whatever. This is your weekend treat car. Um, now, for me, I've gone for something extremely special. It is another McLaren, so I do apologise, but for me, I just love these cars. I've actually gone for the 688 HS. Now, originally, this was... The story, I think, that goes... You can correct me if I'm wrong on this one. A gentleman approached McLaren after the 675 LT had obviously come out and it wasn't quite exclusive enough for him and it wasn't quite powerful enough for him. So he managed to get 25 people together to stump up the cash for the R&D and also um, obviously to get McLaren to actually do it, to prove there was a customer base for it, uh, to create this called the 688 HS. There's not many of them in the UK. There's 25 in total in the world. Uh, I've seen three or four of them now. I've been fortunate enough to see a few. Um, as you can tell, it's a lot more a lot more expensive than a normal six seven five. It's just going on for four hundred and fifty thousand pounds. But it's fixed rear wing, which a lot the other cars don't have. It's f- every single one of them was completely fully spec'd out by MSO, which is McLaren Special Operations. Um, they worked with the guys buying these cars to really really make them their own. Um, Fixed rear wing, like I said, slightly up on power compared to 675 at 688. Um, but for me, just an amazing car. That car on a big, like blasting down A roads and B roads, I don't think you can do much better. Um, McLaren. Yeah, they, I would system. agree, yeah. yeah. I mean, for performance wise, um, yeah, I do love it for that. Don't get me wrong. And I also like the story that goes in behind it as well. Um, I think that is part of the appeal as well so yeah. I, i'm yeah. not i'm not again this is not confirmed because i've never spoken to an actual owner or someone who, who's got one but there were rumors that i've read that these were over a million pounds a piece when they when they obviously purchased them new they obviously lost wow. they've obviously lost money on them but i think these people who actually approached mclaren to build this car and were willing to stump up for the r&d and things like that i don't think they strapped for cash so they're probably not that bothered <laughs> No, I, I doubt so as well, yeah. And the one cool thing about this is, if you did want to take it on a track, I know I've got my track there, it it could also do that. It's the obviously LT version, in theory, with a few extras on, of the McLaren. It's got the full track camera set up as well, so you can record all your laps. Um, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily use it for that that often, but... That, it's there. It is there, should you want it. But yeah, so that for me... Absolute weekend treat car, just blasting around in one of those. Yeah, and I must admit, they are great. Yeah. And I will say for the record now that, um, obviously, really difficult for me to choose my treat car, so I'm a weekend one. And we specifically said that we were counting classics out because I talk about classics a lot and I don't want to continue repeating myself. So I've gone for cars that are relatively new. 
But my first choice out of all of them would be the Bentley Continental GT, if we're talking now, with that fantastic um, six-litre W12. So what I'm saving the environment with is the I-Pace. I'm afraid I'm giving it all back with the yeah. Bentley. You can more, more than um, make up for it with this. That being said, though, it does have cylinder deactivation technology, and apparently they're remarkably efficient on motorway cruising. Yeah, I think I think you can get over 30 mpg if you try. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, I think we've differed in what we've chosen here because I think what we would choose to do on the weekend with our treat cars are very different as well. Yeah. I would love nothing more than to just cruise down to the south of France or just major long distance cruising, which for me is, yes, I want some performance on the B roads, but I want something that's big, fast and comfortable that will bomb down the road. And to be honest, I can't think of anything better than the new Conti to fit that brief. No, it, they, they literally were designed for that big, fast. They were, but you see, and a surprising amount of performance when you want it as well. Oh, yeah, they're not slow. What are they pushing? These not guys? slow in the slightest. Let's have a look. I um, uh, yeah, I love it. Um, I will, as you say, I was going to drop in some specs, but you brought them up here. So, yeah, obviously, it's got the famous 6-litre W12, 626 horsepower, and a not 62 in 3.7 seconds. Do you know what? Mad. The slowest thing I've ever seen. I, I don't know how. These are over two tonnes worth of car. You can get two tonnes yeah. of car to do over 200 miles an hour with 600 horsepower. You're laughing, aren't you? And as you they are know, wonderful. Yeah, as you well know, I adore the new GT. I think it is genuinely one of the prettiest cars. It, it sounds controversial, but the looks of the new Continental, they've done a fantastic job. It's gorgeous, gorgeous car. I think they've done a fantastic job inside and out. One of the things I... It's a small detail in the interior that I love is the revolving central dashboard display. Yes. Um, it revolves three times. You can either have the screen for when you're using the sat nav. It'll revolve around to just the dials, like um, is on the pictures Adam's displaying here, with a compass and with a clock and all the wonderful stuff. Or you can just have plain wood. Yeah. I think that will do a fantastic job of making the car not age as badly as maybe some other cars. Yeah, because the screens will look dated eventually. Well, not to worry, you can just... Fold them away. Yeah, fold it away. No, I, I absolutely agree. The only thing that ever ruined the last generation of Bentley Continental was the new one. Because I, the first gen, I didn't really like that much. I thought it was a bit bulky. I liked it at the time. But then they brought out the facelift one and I thought, wow, that's like, that, they've really upped the game here. And this one's amazing. And then they brought out this. And just, I love it. I actually do love it. You, you and the truth of it is as well, there is no car I would rather drive across Europe or America or anywhere long distance, say. There is no car I would rather do it. No, I agree. And it's yours for £170,000. It's the same price as my McLaren track car. Um, exactly. Yeah. Or if you're that way inclined, you can have it a higher purchase for £4,000 a month. <laughs> right. So it claims. If you have that kind of money, go nuts. Yeah, no, I, I think that is a fantastic choice. Um, I'm just getting a bit conscious of time here. Um, so we'll just, we will wrap it up there. Um, just because it's probably a good, well, it's a good place to end well. Perfect three car garage. Um, if you do have any more topics that you want us to discuss, by all means, drop us a message or a link, uh, all the links in the descriptions below. And we will certainly cover that for you. Um, but if not, obviously we'll be back again next week for another episode. So we will yep. see you then. Yeah.